checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. And it is the day that at 9 Pacific... It may be midnight, by the way. Which is midnight for you guys. My, One way my... or the other, late, late tonight, the Vince McMahon documentary is going to take place. And apparently Vince has seen part of it. Apparently he has not seen the entire thing. I don't know why I find that funny, but I do. But he had a statement here today, and he said, I don't regret participating in this Netflix documentary. The producers had an opportunity to tell an objective story about my life and the incredible business I built, which were equally filled with excitement, drama, fun, and a fair amount of controversy and life lessons. Unfortunately, based on an early partial cut that I have seen, this doc falls short and takes the predictable path of conflating the Mr. McMahon character with my true self, Vince. The title and promos alone make that evident. A lot has been misrepresented or left out entirely in an effort to leave viewers intentionally confused. The producers use typical editing tricks with out-of-context footage and dated sound bites, etc., to distort the viewer's perception and support a deceptive narrative. In an attempt to further their misleading account, the producers use a lawsuit based on an affair I ended, he says, as evidence that I am, in fact, Mr. McMahon, I hope the viewer will keep an open mind and remember that there are two sides to every story. That's what he says. That's what he said. Did you see what um, Ann Callis said? Yes, yeah, she says, Vince McMahon physically and emotionally abused, sexually assaulted, and human trafficked Janelle Grant for more than two years, calling his horrific and criminal behavior, quote, an affair is delusional and nothing more than a sad attempt to save his shredded reputation. Although Ms. Grant has not seen the Mr. McMahon docuseries, we hope it shines a bright light on his abhorrent and criminal actions by accurately portraying the realities of abusive and exploitive behavior. Ms. Grant will no longer be silenced by McMahon. Her story, though deeply troubling and exceptionally painful, is the one can help other abuse survivors find their voices. We seek to hold McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and WWE accountable and to give Ms. Grant her day in court. Mm -hmm. So that's what they said. Okay, so 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 real so quickly, um, I was told by the people with the doc that it that it that it will hit at midnight Eastern, but people have told me that Netflix generally uh, releases stuff at three a.m. Eastern, so it would be one of those. The, the people with the doc thought it was midnight, but that's whatever. So so it's but it's it's going to be tonight. So the. There's a lot to this. Obviously, I've known about this project and part of the project for a long, long, long time. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that's, it's, there's a, the timeline of this is, is pretty interesting because if you remember, it was first announced on a WWE um, investors call, I believe, where they said that it would be the, uh, that Netflix was putting more money into this documentary than anything that they have ever produced, any documentary that they've ever produced. And I guess that uh, Vince signed off on, you know, the creative. I thought it was WWE. Were, uh, the whole time I, that I was doing it, I thought it was a WWE doc. Um, you know, like the Andre the Giant one. Um, because of Bill Simmons' involvement. Bill Simmons did the Andre one. Bill Simmons was involved with, with this one. Um, when it started, so this, was, this goes back to 2019 when I think they started working on it. And, you know, it was... You know, Vince himself basically said that, uh, you know, he told uh, Chris Smith, who's the guy in charge, and he said, like, I don't want a puff piece. I want, you know, I want you to have, like, a, you know, uh, the good and the bad. I think, it would, you know, he, think, he thought it was going to be a very interesting story. So that's what Vince said. And I was also told that the most fascinating character in the documentary uh, would be Vince McMahon, who sat down for multiple interviews for the thing. As time went on, um, the obviously the story, which was, was nearly done in 2022, um, it's gonna be, it's, I think it started, maybe it was going to be a one or two part series. They got so much good stuff, it turned into a four part series. Then, uh, you know, the Vince's resignation, uh, the the formation of TKO, the merger with UFC, and then Vince is uh, being forced out essentially, and the Janelle Grant lawsuit uh, meant you know two more episodes. I think that the sixth episode 
may be the one that goes the heaviest into the Janelle Grant stuff, um, is is my impression. But certainly with the last two episodes, because the first four episodes were already done. Um, not not when the Wall Street Journal stuff was done, I believe. Um, or maybe they were almost, maybe it was the first four and, and they were pretty much completely done. But I remember when I did my my second interview with them, there were four episodes done and they were looking at doing a fifth and then it ended up being a, and it ended up being a sixth as well, which would have been, um, you know, all the stuff from, you know, really this year. While this is going on, um, Vince obviously realized that this documentary was going to be different uh, from what he had imagined it would be. So um, this is before the Netflix deal with WWE, which was signed um, in January of this year. So he had tried, I believe, last year. This is the story in the puck um, on that today. But he had apparently tried to buy the documentary, which would basically buy it to kill it, you know, um, buy the rights to it to kill it, like a lot of media does um, or, or a lot of rich people do with unfavorable media at times. And Netflix turned him down, and then he tried to get Ari Emanuel to do the same, you know, to try to get the thing uh, killed, and that didn't work. So here we are. Vince's statement today probably did more to, um, you know, publicize the documentary, and probably like if if I'm doing the documentary, I I couldn't have I couldn't have wished for better publicity than Vince's statement today because it was covered all over the place. Everyone knows Vince hates it, and by doing so, it makes people think it's going to be probably really honest and really devastating to Vince, which is, you know, so, um, you know, I, I mean, Vince, to me, what Vince did, kind of like, um, I mean, I guess he felt he had to say it, but I think that it it probably backfired in the sense that if, you know, by saying it, a lot more people are going to watch it, and a lot more people are going to also go in with the idea that, um, you know, Vince said this, and then watching the documentary, they're just going to think even, I think it's going to be a negative on Vince, um, the fact that he said all this. So that's the story. Obviously, Vince thinks it's going to be very negative. I have not seen it, uh, obviously. Um, they have not um, released any stuff for any media because I think that they don't want anyone to see it until the finished product's out there. But there are people I know who have seen it, which I've brought up before, who um, did feel it was very negative towards Vince. Um, and probably, should, you know, you watch the, you do the facts of the story and everything. I mean, how is it not going to be? I mean, the, the, the stuff, I mean, the history stuff, I mean, whether you... You know, talk about whatever it is, all the stuff from the 90s with the Ring Boys, you know, all of the stuff. You know, one of the things that people don't realize is that so much of the stuff with Vince from the 80s and 90s that was way below the radar um, wouldn't, would, would, be, would be devastating if any of that stuff happened today. You know, back then it was just like, ah, it's wrestling, who cares? Nobody covered wrestling. And if you did, you know, it was kind of like, it's a joke, don't you know it's all fake? So everything became fake. The deaths were fake. Um, you know, the scandals were fake. The drugs were fake. Um, everything was, you know, as, as long as it's fake, nothing's real. So it doesn't matter. These are cartoon characters. They're not real life people. So all of the, you know, any abuse or anything like that, it's like, well... They're all fakes. So what does it matter? And that was kind of the impression, you know, back then. Um, obviously, the uh, the way situations with abuse of women, alleged abuse of women, is handled very differently now. I mean, back then it was, look, I mean, whether it's Weinstein or whoever, you know, Bill Cosby. I mean, that stuff was going on for decades. And these were powerful people. And they're hardly the only ones. And it didn't come out, you know, and then obviously in recent years, this stuff came out. And when the stuff started coming out, you know, I mean, I remember thinking that like, you know, and not just Vince. I mean, there's so many people in wrestling, so many that, the you know, could be in a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble because of the lifestyle um, of what the business was and what the people in the business did and what was considered, I don't want to say acceptable, 
in real life, but in their life, in, in pro wrestling, in the, what, what was acceptable and commonplace in the pro wrestling world in the 70s and 80s and 90s, um, in 2021 or 2022 or 2023 would be considered abhorrent. And, you know, Vince was obviously, you know, I mean, there were obviously the obvious skeletons in his closet that people knew about. And it was just a question of, um, you know, but, he, you know, he wasn't even the only one. It was just, but it was, but he was a key one. When all this was going down, I'm going like, someone going to say something about Vince. And then I started thinking, you know, they'll, they'll go after independent wrestlers. And they'll go after this and that. And they all know about Vince, but no one's going to go after him because he's Vince. You know, I mean, the same reason that you don't really see a lot of people even now um, knocking him even after the lawsuit was filed. There are some, but there's not really a lot because he's Vince. Um, but, you know, that's what this will be. I mean, I know that, um, like I did, the, the I did an interview that was... Um, that they were asking me a lot of questions that would lead to, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, I mean, pretty much no stone unturned. I mean, whether it's the Owen Hart death or whether it's the scandals or Vince or whatever, you know, I mean, it was all asked. I mean, there was nothing, there was nothing that you guys don't know that, that I wasn't asked about. The second one that I did was actually, you know, a lot more on his... Um, I don't want to say um, I was a lot on his positives, but also it was talking a lot about how, because um, this would have been the second one would have been after, um, it was before the Janelle Grant lawsuit was filed, but after Vince had gotten into trouble in uh, 2022. So that interview was, was, you know, there was a lot of positive on Vince that I spoke about, um, but obviously there was many negative questions as well. So... I would say, you know, my experience would be, you know, we'll see how it's edited. You know, I mean, they, you know, they were asking positives, they were asking negatives, you know, and it was all, you know, it was all talked about. So I think as far as stories go, I think that most people who have followed Vince, whether it's in The Observer or just studied up on Vince, I don't think that there's going to be anything that you don't know in there. Um, I think it will reinforce what you know. I think if you're predisposed to liking Vince, you're probably going to hate this. I think that I was going to say that if you're predisposed to hating Vince, that you'll probably hate this too, because, um, you know, I expect it to be, I expect a lot of positive on Vince. Because look, they interviewed, you know, I don't know how many people, but an incredible number of people. And I mean, it's, you know, from Dwayne and, and Bruce Pritchard and all these guys, they're not going to be saying anything, you know. Most of these guys are not going to be saying anything negative about Vince. So there's going to be a lot of positive. I think Vince didn't, you know, probably is not happy with the the negative, the fact that I don't know what he expected though. Um with the, with the with the Grant story. I don't know if he just wanted it to be like you know, don't you know that it's not true and and you shouldn't be talking. I don't know what he was looking for. I really don't. But you know, I mean, we'll see how. I mean, it's going to be covered like you expect it to be covered. I mean, cuz there's only one way to, you know, you you know, you cover it, you give both sides, and it's going to be out there. And, uh, you know, that's that. But uh, obviously, you know, Vince did Vince did them uh, a great job publicity-wise today. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why he did it. But, um, you know, I mean, it's not like he just saw this thing and came to this negative conclusion. This, this goes back a couple of years. And, um, I mean, the thing, the other thing that's so fascinating about this is I mean, if you remember, the deal with Netflix was signed a couple of days before the Janelle Grant lawsuit was filed, and that was not it. It was not like this was behind the scenes. This deal that was everybody was drinking champagne about. I mean, there were there were people in Netflix that were um, not high on this deal, but but they signed it. You know, they went with it. But um, but there were people who were trepidatious about getting into business with WWE. And I think that if this lawsuit had been filed a month earlier, um, I mean, once the, once the deal was signed and they were all excited and been announced, I mean, they didn't back off because Vince was gone. You know, it's like you got to remember that 
the lawsuit's filed. You know, they sign the deal. It's announced. A couple days later, the lawsuit's filed. A day or two later, Vince is gone. So Vince is gone. So if Vince had stayed, would they have stayed with the deal? Who the hell knows? But if they had known about this, um, especially if it had been Vince's company and it was not, um, you know, Endeavor, you know, TKO wasn't in charge, Endeavor wasn't in charge. It was this, the old Vince McMahon company that was doing this, that Nick Khan had made this deal. And this comes out before it, um, the you know, the, the face of the future of the industry would be very different because I don't know that Netflix would go for that deal. And the Netflix deal is is a gigantic, gigantic, you know, cannot be overstated. That's the future of that company is the Netflix deal all over the world. And, you know, not just the United States and more all over the world than the United States. The United States is still going to be, te- they're still going to have television in the United States. They're not having anything but Netflix most of the rest of the world. So, um, but, you know, I mean, Netflix could have gone in there and said that, uh, you know, we, you know, we've, we've got this deal. We, we've spent, you know, with, for 10 years, perhaps 20, um, maybe five with these guys. Maybe we don't want to hit them so hard. Um, a lot of people were thinking that. I don't know the answer to that. But evidently, um, you know, I mean, all, all signs are that that was not the case, you know. And I think that, you know, all everything that I got, you know, from, from, from what I was told was that, that this was totally independent, that they had complete control over it. Um, you know, WWE did not have veto power over it. Um, in the end, obviously, because if they did, it'd be a very different documentary. So anyway, that's that's that. But it's a very uh, it's another one of those stories that uh, when you go back, especially that boy, there's a lot of twists and turns. When, when you go back, like or go forward about ten years, and then you look back on this, it's it's going to look it's pretty fascinating. I think we're still too close timing wise. Everything's happened this year that we really can't can't grasp the full magnitude of everything that has happened this year. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.